Please proceed. Thank you. Uh, uh, my name is Tim Parker. I'm president of NEA Alaska, uh, and I am here today to testify in favor of HB 287. And I just want to say thank you to the chairs and uh, the sponsors and the co-sponsors uh, for the opportunity to uh, express some support for this particular bill. Um, as I think uh, I've spoken to most of you before, uh, the educators in Alaska care a lot about student learning. It's the driving force that, uh, that pushes us towards what we do. Uh, we love it when a lot of student learning happens in classrooms around the state. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's what motivates us and, and gets us going every day. So that's where our thoughts are 99% um, of the time. Uh, but at times, we want to express uh, our opinion on, on bills such as this. And HB 287, uh, it, it does appear uh, poised to correct some problems that we've seen in this particular uh, situation. Most of you are aware of what happened last summer with the delay in funding and what, it hap what happened in particular schools and, uh, and districts around the state. We handed out pink slips around the state uh, in record numbers and uh, with, with the thought, unfortunately, that we were probably going to rescind those pink slips, and, and which we did. And in that interim of time period when we had issued some pink slips and then uh, asked for them to come back, many of our best and brightest uh, teachers left the state. They weren't sure whether or not we were going to support them and, and whether or not there was going to be a continued uh, uh, opportunity for them to, to do what they care about and, and practice their craft and, and make student learning happen here. Um, and so many of them left. And the damage of, of having some of your best and brightest exit unexpectedly at the last second is it hurts the system. A, a good quality education system is based on relationships. And those relationships develop over time. They don't start uh, on, uh, you know, just at a snap. They take years to develop. And, uh, and you want your best and brightest to stay here, and you don't want to give them the impression that they, they need to leave. Right now, as, a, as an education system, we're very focused on uh, the Alaska Education Challenge. There's going to be a press conference later today at 1 o'clock uh, with the commissioner talking about that. That's where our energy and focus is. We're trying to lean into things that we think are going to help districts make better decisions about how to increase and maximize student learning. And that's where we want to put our focus and effort. But if, if funding is delayed, we'll find ourselves in a situation where, um, where we're not focused as much as we want to on the things that we should be. And, and I think that's, that's where the problem is. So we ask you to pass 287 to do the early education funding, create some stability in our system, so that, the, uh, so that we don't see our best and brightest heading out the door and thinking that things are better somewhere else because uh, we're handing out pink slips every year. That, it's not a good way to go. So I appreciate your support for this, and uh, I think it will help the morale of uh, your educators in the state to see that you have gotten through your work at a timely manner and they don't have to look for that pink slip. So thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any questions of the committee? Uh, we've got Representative Grin and then Representative Seaton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Chair. Uh, thanks for being here, yeah. Mr. Parker. Uh, I had a question earlier regarding, I know in, in Anchorage School District, March 1st is when they submit a budget to the yeah. municipality. Is that uh, that deadline common, do you know, throughout the state, or is it kind of right? They're, they're not exactly all the same, but uh, yeah, it is common that the budgets get submitted by the districts early, and then they do have to go through funding mechanisms with their boroughs. Um, you know, the end result is that uh, if, you know, we got, we, we talked about in the, uh, in, in other discussions on this, whether April 1st was the right date. And, and I, and the experts that uh, have looked at this, the superintendents and the, and the money people essentially that are, are doing the, doing the calculations on that, I'll say that to go anywhere after April 1st is to, is to risk potentially putting us in a position where, where we'd end up with some pink slips, depending on those different mechanisms in different districts. Follow up? Uh, thank you. Uh, so even though May 15th, again, in Anchorage, mm -hmm. is, is a, an important deadline, yeah. earlier than that, mm -hmm. that we can do uh, is preferred. Yes, yeah. I, 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 yeah, just because of the way the different steps that have to happen, we've been told that April 1st is, a, is, a, is the, an important date to make sure that the legislature has taken action by that time. But, you know, I leave it to your 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 wisdom on on the specifics of that. But uh, yeah, last in past years uh, we've managed to go. I think education funding has been passed a little bit later than April first, and we've managed to avoid pink slips. If that's where we're going with that question, but 
it's something that needs to be thought about for sure. Cast, which I believe is a $56 a barrel price in FY18. So um, follow up. Follow up. So, um, so you're projecting on 56 uh, dollars a barrel, and I know that uh, just the other day we were at $70 a barrel. Is that correct? Representative Hilton, yes, through the chair, that's correct. So there, there's an opportunity for some increased balances in our accounts. Through the chair, Representative Hilton, if prices held at $70 for the rest of this fiscal year, um, there we would have about $200 million additional in the CBR. So instead of $2.1 billion, it would be $2.3 Thank you. Do we have any further 